Okay. There's the three of swords again. Hey, man, we're getting some different perspectives coming up here. And then the nine of cups. What do we want, family? I feel like we know what we want. I'm asking this general question just because I think you guys already know what you want. I feel like you guys are open to seeing what you get, but you ultimately know what you want. Usually people don't figure out what, you know, figure out what you want from them until you finally say it. <laughs> you're like waiting and seeing and observing, but then when the time is right, you're like, yeah, no, actually I don't care. Goodbye. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes, nine of cups. This is about desire, wants, feeling content, feeling happy, or this is personal happiness. Queen of Swords, that's your energy. Um, typically, the Nine of Swords is your energy, but be, for the sake of the reading and the fact that this is the Queen of Swords, the focus is about you, your perspectives, and you, you know how you you know how you view things. Um, but it also could tell me too that you guys are being very logical about the relationships that you involve yourself in. You guys are probably a little detached with the people that you're involved with because, of course, there's an aspect of you that's protecting yourself right now. Three swords don't come up for nothing. There's some things that you're protecting right now. You're not fully giving of yourself at this moment. Like the Queen of Swords, I don't ever see her giving of herself to others. She's always reserved in some way, shape, or form because she's trying to protect herself. That reserve reservation may is what you know makes her truth so potent and so strong and sometimes pretty gosh darn deadly and pretty gosh darn painful because she's no longer she's not looking at the situation from your perspective the queen of swords is typically the card for libra but libra is also about rule following and following things by a certain way and if there are certain things that she has in line no matter what you do it still does it i mean unless of course there's great reason which is why this person the queen of Queen energies are usually more receptive than kings. They also at least see your side of the story, but usually they still stay the same way. So I feel like you're open, but not open, Gemini. You play. You have one foot in, one foot out. Like you're ready to kick someone's ass, but you're also waiting for them to put that glass slipper on your shoe, and you you know go about your business from there. Sorry for that really weird noise. It was my computer being crazy. Anyway. So, in the past, you had the chariot. Things were going great. Like, I feel like the situation was going perfect as long as you kept things in an orderly fashion. Kept moving, kept things in an organized condition. As long as you, you know, took care of your needs, you were able to do what you need to do to get what you wanted out of it. But now, with all the work that you've been putting in, I feel like you guys are trying to figure out what are the next steps. Because, of course, with the work that you've put in from then to now, you're in a different place, you're in a different lifestyle, you're different, doing a lot of different things, but you still have got a lot of stuff done and not a lot of return from it. So I don't know if you guys are looking from the situation as, uh, from the aspect of return, but more of emotional fulfillment. Because, I mean, I feel like you don't mind doing the work as long as you get something emotionally out of it, which you haven't been getting out of. I feel like you guys have been, the reason why the Queen of Swords is coming up is because you feel, feel like your emotional valves are depleted. Like, there's nothing that's filling you up emotionally. So now you're kind of running on, you know, on gasoline. Like, we're all, like, you're, you're, you've turned into robot mode in a sense. But I'm kidding. I don't think you guys, any of you guys turned into robot mode. I feel like you guys really want something emotionally pleasing, something emotionally satisfactory. You want to feel content. It's content. That's why the Nine of Cups is coming up here. And I feel like what the more you start looking at it and start reevaluating, the easier it will become to manifest. I feel like right now it's just figuring out what particular, what in particular do you want to begin or what do you want to manifest. Figuring it out is the biggest thing, right? Making that decision to figure out what it is to run. I feel like you already know. So why do we have the seven of coins here? Why do we have the seven of pentacles? If you already know what you want, what is there to reevaluate? The ace of wands, reconnecting with an ex, starting something passionate, starting creating creating a new adventure. So you you know you're really evaluating either the amount of passion, wow of excitement that you have towards something that you originally wanted to start. Or you are evaluating 
you're reevaluating, getting back together with an ex, sparking something new. You put in a lot of work already when it comes to starting a very passionate lifestyle, but it's still a lot of work and not a lot of return. So it's learning, running a little dry. But I feel like, what about that passionate experience do you want? Like, what kind of passion experience do you want? Because I feel like it's now detailing what exactly you're actually trying to go towards. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like you guys have already created some sort of passionate spark. Something that really got you going that began a new journey. But, but, it's not in the area of which you would prefer. So, what is it that you prefer? And I feel like once you figure that out, God help y'all, okay? God help the world, because you're going to be manifesting like nobody's business, okay? He's like, yeah, I got it now. I'm ready to go. And it starts happening, the magician. So, it's just only a matter of time. What In what area of passion do you want? What part of your life do you want to feel excited for? Or do you want to start building something of great value in like and i know it's not pace it's not the pentacles energy or anything like that but the wands energy that's excitement it's passion it's creativity you know it's very leo like energy so i love it your best path to follow Jesus, best for what the best path to follow is the page of cups so the page of cups coming up in your best path to follow you can you really with page of cups really means is that you know this you know something that you need to nurture take time and taking care of you know it could be a pet a companion um an offer for you know of a connection or communication of some sort of emotional truth or emotional you know desires or really developing something that you eventually want to have over time right so i feel like it's creating either a new dream or going after a, or actually nurturing and growing some sort of passion here because the page of cups that's someone that has a dream already and i like i said before you i think you already know what you want but it's like like the fire behind it the work that's necessary to put into it, do you want to do it? Is that there? Do you have that? Do you want that? Is that, the as is that aspect right there something that, you know, that can lead to what you want? And some of you guys, it could be that you guys actually don't know in what area do you guys want this excitement to be or this new, you know, passion this new project to come out of or this new relationship, how you want this relationship to be kindled or to be kindled, period. But I feel like if you start somewhere, it'll be a lot easier to pinpoint. So I feel like for a lot of you guys, you kind of have like a prelude to your story. Some of you guys are starting something that's not necessarily very serious, but you've put in a lot of work to at least see what area and what direction do you want to go in, right? What are you trying to achieve? You want a friend, but you want someone that can grow with you and can still keep up with you. I'm thinking of the three of cups, three of swords, and the eight of wands. Someone that you can connect with, someone that's your tribe, someone that you mesh with so, so freaking well. Someone that you can enjoy life with, someone that you can overcome pains and, and you know, shadow selves and shadow growth with, you know, that you can really, really grow with, you know. That this is a person that can trick you, that help you look at yourself a lot more, but also can still go with the flow. That doesn't stop or get, you know, get a little crazy when situations start to take a little bit of a different turn, right? They can go with the swing. And I feel like with the Page of Cups, is like going for your desire, focusing on what you want, you know, but feeling it for yourself. Do you have all those aspects in, in, in yourself? Because the only way for you to manifest whatever it is that you want gemini you have to have that already preset right so i feel like the page of cups is like so how do you give yourself this how do you make yourself feel this way do you have something already in progress that you're growing taking time to um to build is that coming coming to fruition is this uh, are you doing this for yourself in some way Let's see what, what additional information we can get with Page Cups. 
Page of Cups. Why is Page of Cups coming out for Gemini's advice? Maybe it's talking about expressing your love to somebody. Extending your feelings out to somebody. Could be... Oh no, probably not. Knight of Swords, Seven of Swords. The Knight of Swords doesn't do anything in secret and keeps moving too fast and he doesn't give a fuck enough to actually be careful in that, er in that area to be more cautious and, you know, s sneaky. But you got two cards here, man. Two confusing cards together. Like, this combination I would never thought I'd see. But then what's interesting about these two cards is they're going in the right, they're going in the same direction. One's more more calculated and more scheming, a little more sneaky, not necessarily, you know, open to expressing what they're doing. You know, they're just kind of being like, well, you know, just minding my business when they're really clearly doing something they, you know, they probably want to keep to themselves. But the Knight of Swords, he's very vocal. He's very outgoing. He's very like, hey, this is what's happening. This is my truth. Get out of my way if you don't want to hear it. But, like, both of these two are non- like both of these two are not the same in regards to how they deliver the message or how they deliver certain things. Knight, Knight of Swords, he will bulldoze you. He will run you over. Versus the Seven of Swords, where he would just prefer you to get out. You know, he would just prefer never to run into you at all, so he'll take detours. This is, I feel like the Seven of Swords is always that person that will take the detour. Do something that's, you know, evasive, you know? Um... You know, they're just trying to get out of dodge, right? So I kind of feel like what's, what's interesting is that there is a huge amount of risk. This huge amount of risk. Because the Seven of Swords can also indicate risks. And it's just somebody being sneaky and weird. But they have to take a risk about being honest and, you know, forward about what they want. I feel like there may have been some sort of passion sparking with somebody, but you put in a lot of the work. And I, I feel like so ultimately this may be something that you do want, but it does require you to apply yourself. Okay. Wow. Interestingly enough. Interesting, um, interesting reading so far. So your external energy is the Ten of Swords. Something ended, but you put a lot of work into it. Or that something comes, something that's coming to an end here. I honestly feel like it's the evaluation process. I'm just going to lay it out there. I feel like it has to do with evaluation. Because just by the Seven of Coins and the Ten of Swords, you know, there's a lot of reviewing. What have you done? How much work have you put in? What's come out of it so far? Something has come out of it. And I feel like it's excitement. It's passion. It's a new inspiration towards something that you may want to go for. But it had to happen from an ending. Or something's coming to an end. Which has to do with what you've been working really hard to get inspiration from let's see what jesus ten of swords and the lovers the connection that you have with somebody may be ending here or this, this is an ending a preview this is about the ending of some sort of connection between you and a person this is also your card gemini i don't know why it's not focusing there we go um, but yeah, the lovers is your card, Gemini, bouncing, it's not bounce over the head and your heart, but it's, the, this is a, it's sometimes seen as a choice. Um, how I personally read it is, is the acceptance of your head with your heart, your heart working together with it as a team with your heart versus your heart, mind trying to convince your, your, your mind trying to convince your heart of something else and your mind, your, of course, your heart being extremely stubborn with it. I feel like the the acceptance portion definitely really says a lot when it comes to the Ten of Swords. Because the Ten of Swords, that's a card that does talk about deep acceptance. This cannot be changed. This situation is the rawest of the raw of all kinds of ending of all the endings in the tarot. So the fact that this ending is so brutal and so so painful, there the only way for you to be able to love yourself and to move forward from it is by accepting this 
this loss, accepting the situation as is, and knowing that there can be potential for greatness despite what has already happened. So the Ten of Swords comes up twice in this reading, but it's also coming up with the lovers. So interesting pairing. But I kind of feel like for some of you guys, it may have to do with a breakup, with something that's some sort of attachment or some sort of ending with somebody that you had a really close connection with. Really, really close. And then, as a matter of fact, if we look back at the three cards that fell out with the, you know, the three of cups, three of swords, that's a connection that is just triggering. That's a reunion that triggers you. Or there's something, this is, an, in, this is about, in, um, your inner circle. This is about your inner circle and the part of that inner circle that triggers you. But I feel like that's something that you want. Even if it triggers you, it's something that you do want. It's just scary to put yourself out there. That's the thing. That's why you have the Knight of Swords and the Seven of Swords. Because that really weird tug and pull. Like, I don't want to do this, but I do want to do this. You're reevaluating it because your mind is like, well, I remember what happened last time, but your heart is like, yes, this is it. This is my happiness. Are you going to allow yourself to do it, Gemini, now? Because I think the only thing the Seven of Coins is doing isn't really reevaluating. I feel like it is just re I mean, I think it's reevaluating in the sense of how to make it successful for you, but I feel like it's also. You know, a way of procrastinating. I think everybody's got a really weird procrastinating energy. But only, of course, right? To protect ourselves. To actually be sure that we can handle it. Because we don't want to hurt. We don't want to feel any pain. But pain also leads to great happiness and to great love. It can lead to those great things. Especially with all of that coming to yourself. So, the Three of Swords coming up in your hopes and fears... I think you want to overcome the pain that happened here with the Ten of Swords in the past. I feel like there may be something else coming into an end soon with the Ten of Swords and the external energy like this. But it's not it's not a new ending. I think it's just looking at what has been over for a while, accepting it, and seeing the potential for greatness. But by changing your perspective with the Hangman and your outcome. So, the Three of Swords is, I really feel like it's overcoming the loss, the pain, the the triggering emotions, right? Like, whether this is a friend or someone that you met, that meant dearly to you as a relationship, this is something that you really will hope to overcome so that you can be open to seeing the world from a different angle, to a different view, to, to move forward with your life and know that you have, you know, and know that you'll be okay, you know, because you survived one of the greatest pains in your life. Man, this is a pretty deep, Gemini. Was definitely not expecting this type of reading here. So let's see what we got going on for the power of surrender cards. Okay, surrender uh, Surrender your belief in scarcity. Jeez. The universe is asking you to open, to, uh, open to the infinite nature of abundance. In this way, you can remove blocks in your life and succeed beyond your wildest dreams. The Ten of Swords, the loss, man, is the only thing at this moment. It's not necessarily standing in your way, but... It's like the, the the building block that's there that will propel you forward. It's such a huge, it's a, such a huge position. So let's see what the, oh, time for a nap though. <laughs> but also take a break, take some time to rest, take some time to rejuvenate, to recover, to heal from what you've already experienced. The Ten of Swords is not an easy energy to overcome. It's totally not. And the fact that you're already trying to figure out what your new your, your next action is, it's great. But do you have the energy to take all that on after overcoming this, this serious ending? I feel like giving yourself that time, giving yourself that space and make sure that, you know, you take that rest to make sure that you have all your needs taken care of before going on the journey. I feel like you're on point then. 
Time for now is reminding us that we, our body needs time to rejuvenate and to heal, to recover, to rest. 